So it just says as the same for Linux from scratch. The the sequence is you unpack a a package and you change into the directory of that package that's been expanded, um, and then you follow the instructions. And it's the same for every single um, package. Um, and at the end, as it says here, delete the source and the build directories unless it's stated otherwise. And as it says, it just prevents misconfiguration if an old configuration gets picked up. And I'll show you another tip also in how to make sure that you're not actually just expanding over an existing directory, um, which could possibly happen and, and would also cause these similar problems. Just helps avoid any spurious things happening just because we forgot to do something. So if we change into the CLFS and then the sources directory, you can see there's all our packages there and the patches. We can start by expanding file. And just start by running in the command. So it's, we start the monotony of copying and pasting these commands, but um, where there are multiple commands, I recommend copying and pasting them individually just to see the output of each command to make sure the previous ones install correctly or run correctly. Um, it's not like the BLFS where there's command, the commands are linked together such that if one fails, the rest of the commands in the link won't actually execute. By just copying and pasting blocks of commands, if one fails, it will just start trying to execute the next command and it's dangerous in that that one that's failed could be important but it doesn't immediately affect what you're doing but it could affect something later on um, I'm going to also set um, see parallel make I think there's one package I came across that didn't work very well with parallel make um, but for the rest, it seemed to work quite well. Um, so I'll export. Let's put this at the end. So rather than typing in make minus J4 for every make command, um, type make flags equals minus J8 mm. okay so if I do make now it should start oh no it won't fly away because I need to source that file that I just create uh, just edited so now make should work yeah, that's a bit, a bit quicker. Okay, so that's done. So just do make install. So that's the first one done. Next one's the Linux headers. You can see the first command we're going to do when we've changed into the Linux 4.9 directory is we run in the patch set for 4.9 to up upgrade it to 4.9.21. So this is not the patch package, this is the patch set package for the Linux kernel 4.9. So this will expand the package and then patch the output. So that's done. So as I said before, you could copy all these in, but you wouldn't know for certain unless you scroll back, assuming there's enough scroll back buffer, whether the previous commands would work. So just copy and paste them in one at a time. And you'll notice we've got a variable here, which is specifying the architecture we want is i386, which is the basic 32-bit architecture.
Okay, so that's complete. Can remove that and move on to the next one. So we configure, and as you can see, as a reminder, the prefix is in cross tools. So we're, we're just building the extra stage, if you like, the one that's not in the normal Linux from scratch instructions. This extra stage where we're building tools to allow us to do the cross compilation. So we're not actually cross compiling at the moment. We're just enabling ourselves to um, start cross compiling in, in the next section. Okay, so now we can make that. And install. So the next one we've got is end curses. So here I've tabbed it, but it hasn't completed so if this happens, it could mean that there's an old NCurses uh, directory still there, or it could mean there's a patch file ex that exists with NCurses. So I just press tab twice more, and you can see that the reason why it's not com completing all the way is because there's a patch file. It could be that, as I say, that there was an old NCurses if we'd built NCurses previously. Obviously, we haven't come to that stage at the moment because we're only on the third or fourth package now. Um, but that's a way of checking if, if it doesn't complete to the end of the um, tar file, the tar ball, to just tab again to see, to double check that you're not going to expand over an existing um, a copy of NCurses. And if it is there, delete it before you go any further, before you, before you extract the new one. So as it's not there, we can just put a full stop in, press tab again to get the archive, the full name. So CD into NCurses and we'll start the configure. Okay, so let's do the first make. Now, this looks like it might have errors here with these stars, but it's nothing to worry about. That's executed correctly. Okay, we can install the, pro the one program that we need now. Up this package, and that's it. So, next one's package config light. So build it and install it, nice quick one. And we move on to GMP now. So this is the start of the support for the compiler. And the compiler will be building quite a few times as well.
Okay, so you see it's compiling for the host machine, but that's not a problem at the moment because we're still creating tools for the cross compiling. So let's build that. We can install that now, and it's done. And we move on to MPFR. Oh, okay, so this one again is one with a patch file, and that's the first thing we do is to install the patch and then configure it. So now we can make it. And let's install it now. That's done. So next we build MPC. And lastly, we install it, and that's a nice quick one. So, this is where one of the places where um, the CLFS project deviates slightly from the main LFS project, it installs this. ISL library for um, allowing graphite features to be enabled in GCC. As it says, it's not strictly required, but um, when I did my test run of this, I just did everything in the, in the book. Um, even to the point there's a later on we install Vim to be available in the um, final environment. Uh, the final build environment, which I don't find particularly necessary because if you need to do some editing, you can do it outside of the um, system in, in this setup. Um, so you just use the hosts uh, via command or whatever editor you're using, um, but built it anyway because it's just there. So just go with it. So we can extract ISL now. And configure it. And we 
can now make it Lastly, install it. 